Good evening. If you've been keeping up with our reading, you should have finished the last of chapter 15 for this week, which should get us, uh, well, about halfway through the kings and the few queens of Israel. I was talking to Carol before service, and she pointed out that, that to, well, tonight we're hearing about Jezebel and Jehu, and she pointed out that she hadn't heard or didn't see the name Jezebel in the second half of our, re, or in, the, in the, the section that we read tonight. And that's because Jezebel is probably one of the longest running people, especially in this section of the Bible. We see her way back about two-thirds of the way through, um, through First Kings, and she sticks around until about a third of the way through Second Kings. So tonight our reading comes from, well, her end. Let's just put it that way. We'll keep some mystery alive for the, for the actual reading itself, and uh, we're going to hear all about that. Once again, uh, we will have service on the 17th. Although it's not on your bookmark, just move the 24th to the 17th, and then on the 24th, we'll be singing and dancing about jungle animals up here. So if you want to come help out, that would always be welcome. Uh, We'll go ahead and open our service with the song, Jesus' Name Above All Names. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. The day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, We have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the ever light. We sing to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voice for forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, 
the universe proclaims your glory. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As normal, we'll go ahead and be seated. And then as normal, we'll have the, the ladies take care of number one and the gentlemen take care of number two. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let my prayers rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the doors of my lips. But my eyes are turned to you, O God. In you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let my prayers rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us that, with purified mind, we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host and may glorify you forever. Amen. The reading tonight is from 2 Kings chapter 9 beginning with verse 1. Then Elisha the prophet called one of the sons of the prophets and said to him, Tie up your garments and take this flask of oil in your hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. And when you arrive, look there for Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, son of Nimshi, and go in and have him rise from among his fellows and lead him to an inner chamber. Then take the flask of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus says the Lord, I anoint you king over Israel. Then open the door and flee, do not linger. When Jehu came to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her eyes and adorned her head and looked out of the window. And as Jehu entered the gate, she said, Is it peace, you Zimri, murderer of your master? And he lifted up his face to the window and he said, Who is on my side? Who? Two or three eunuchs looked, at him, looked out at him. He said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood spattered on the wall and on the horses, and they trampled on her. Then he went in and ate and drank, and he said, See now to this cursed woman and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. But when they went to bury her, they found no more, than, <clears throat> no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. When they came back and told him, he said, This is the word of the Lord, which he spoke by his servant Elijah the Tishbite. In the territory of Jezreel, the dog shall eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the corpse of Jezebel shall be as dung on the face of the field in the territory of Jezreel, so that no one can say, This is Jezebel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, 
that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they, came, when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the traditions of the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, the, uh, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandments of God and hold to the traditions of men. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandments of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or mother, Whatever you would have gained from me is Corban, that is, given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And many such things you do. And he called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But... The things that come out of a person are what defile him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. Now he has, days. He has spoken to us by his Son. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, through His Son, our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. What goes up must 
come down. This is an interesting saying because, well, if you're anything like me, every day it seems a little less true, right? Uh, Right now, well, let me put it this way. Last year at this time, and those were the most, these are the most, um, uh, uh, the most current numbers I could find, there are 7,700 active satellites, 7,000 7,700 active satellites in orbit. 1,100 of those were sent up and activated just between June and July of 2023. As little as a few years before that, there were something like only 2,000 or 3,000 up there. On top of this, there's another 3,300, or at least there was, that are inactive, just floating around as space junk. And there's 34,000 pieces of man-made something floating around that are bigger than 10 centimeters and millions of it less than 10 centimeters, uh, less than this size. Do you know there are even vehicles up in space? Of course, there's things like Voyager, the Voyager 1 probe that, you know, is meant to stay up there. And there's things like the moon lander, or the moon rover, and the Mars rovers, or several of them. But there's even a Tesla. Thanks, Brandon. Yeah, that's floating around somewhere between us and the sun. But don't worry, if it's going to crash into Earth, the next time that it can happen is 2047. So we got some time before whatever happens with that happens. And the... For the foreseeable future, none of these things are coming down other than maybe an odd Chinese satellite once in a while, right? They went up, but they're not coming down. But this saying has been around for a long time before the space age that we find ourselves in today. It's often used in a literal sense, but it's also used in a figurative sense, i got to say thank you to Emmy for letting me borrow her, t- her toys. If I take and throw this up, it went up, and it came back down, right? In, in a very literal sense. Maybe we'll find another chance to use that later on. Uh, or if you were talking about something in a more figurative sense, like inflation that plagues our economy right now. Hopefully, hopefully... We pray that it went, well, we know it went up. We don't pray for it to go up. We know it went up, and we pray and hope that it comes back down, as it has so many times in the past. However, when we take a look at our odd biblical reading for tonight, uh, our, um, we see here in Second Kings this saying, what goes up must come down used in both a literal and a figurative sense. Oops, that was the economy one. There we go. There we go. Now, this reading is is far from being uh, a... as far from being a random, gory occurrence of defenstration or the act of throwing someone out of a window. You learn something new every day, right? But much like last week, we have to put a whole bunch of context onto what's going on here to really understand what's happening. To help us understand, I found this handy chart, and I know it's pretty small, but the, I cut it in two so I could make it a little bigger. The left side is the kings of Judah, and the right side is the kings of Israel. Just because um, the, the top part got cut off a little bit too, unfortunately. So we'll start with this, and we see some, some very stark contracts, or if you could actually read the words that were printed on there, you would see some very stark contrast. On the kings of Judah side, in the relationship to previous king, all of them are sons. Well, there's one mother, but that's... <sighs> We're going to ignore her. All of them are sons of either the previous king or a king of a few times before them. 
Yet on the other side, on the side of Ju- or on the side of Israel, almost every other king uh, represents a coup going on. So Jeroboam runs, uh, rebels against Rehoboam, and then his son Nahab um, rules, and then Basha kills them and takes over the throne. And it keeps going. Basha's son Elah reigns, and then Zimri, the one that we heard about that, that Jezebel called Jehu today, kills them and takes over the throne. And it keeps going much like this. Only after Jehu, our only mixed king, that's what the yellow is, is that he's not 100% bad, only after him do we see some rain, uh, a rain lasting more than one or two sons. And, and Jehu, one of our subjects, as we said, let me see, nope, it's not going to work, sits right there in the middle of the kings of Israel. Once again, the only one that even comes close to to doing what is right in the eyes of the Lord. He has this yellow color because he removed the worship of Baal. The Baal worship in Israel. But he has this yellow color because he didn't remove all idol worship. He left the golden calves. The ones that we heard about last week that have caused such a problem. And he was not careful... (coughs) Excuse me. He was not careful to walk in the ways of the Lord. Jehu's other big accomplishment is wiping out the line of Ahab. And for the last few weeks, we've been using that term, he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, or he followed in the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebath. Right? And we said Jeroboam's one of the worst kings. Ahab is described as, it would be a good thing if he only did the sins that Jeroboam did. That's how bad this guy is. He is not a good guy. He's one of the most evil kings of the northern kingdom. We don't have time to go into every one of his and his wife's sins, but the short list includes idolatry, murder, attempted murder of prophets, perjury, seeking divination from false gods, releasing terrorists, and theft. You know, just a fun, real short list there. For this and more, Ahab his wife Jezebel, and their line are devoted to destruction by God. In between our two sections, Jehu assassinates Jehoram, son of Ahab, and Ahazah, the bad king of the bad kings of Israel and Judah, respectively. And a little side note: uh, Ahazah is the son of the queen who um, kills a a bunch of the other people so to make sure that her son becomes king and happens to be one of Ahab and Jezebel's daughters. So just a little note there. And then just after this reading, Jehu takes out all of the rest of Ahab's sons and possibly grandsons and great-grandsons. There are 70 of them that he uh, destroys to follow what the Lord has commanded him to do. But in the second half of our reading, oh, sorry, there we can see 70 more sons who are taken out. But in the second half of our king's narrative, we see him finally pull out the linchpin. Jezebel, widow of Ahab, queen mother from Sidon, and mastermind behind the most evil plots of her son and her husband, is finally taken out. We won't go into too much detail because I'm guessing at least a few of you have already had dinner tonight. Uh, But other than to say that she was defenestrated by eunuchs at Jehu's command and then eaten by dogs. All of this is prophesied back in 1 Kings by Elijah. All of this was commanded by our Lord to remove this evil away from His people. What goes up must come down. 
And we see this in a literal sense. In what happens to um, Ahab, his son, his line, and especially in what happens to his wife Jezebel. But in a figurative sense, we see this as well. This line thought they were above both human and God's laws. They thought that they could steal, murder, and pillage with no consequences. But the Lord brought them uh, um, but the Lord brought them to what in those days was considered a humiliating end. Even some of the worst of the worst that we have heard of, like Absalom, receive a burial. But Ahab, Jezebel, his sons, and, and all those who are wiped out are left to the dogs and to the wild birds. This was an insult. This was a humiliation showing how much they had sinned against God. They set themselves up, but the Lord brought them down hard. Sadly, we can see in that big white space on the left side, or excuse me, on the right side, the the consequences of their actions reach far beyond their descendants being killed. Due to rampant idolatry, in, um, encount, or excuse me, encouraged by every king of the north, it's not long after Jehu, just a few uh, kings, probably about five kings after him, that the kingdom is taken into captivity and lo- into exile forever. The kingdom that thought they could set up their own gods and place themselves over the Lord um, and set themselves above Him are brought down and lost forever. But as we say all too often, this is not a problem that was just faced 3,000 years ago. We see it in our Gospel reading where the Pharisees are making men's traditions more important than the laws of God. And we see it In our lives today, when, um, and we see it in our lives today, what goes up must come down. We are still not, we ourselves are not above the laws of God. Christ tells us that he came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it in our stead. Paul tells us not to keep sinning so that grace may abound, and the other biblical authors tell us to run away from sin as fast as we can because we are not above God's laws. And when we try and set ourselves above them or Him, it only leads, as we see tonight, to nothing but death and destruction. We have clearly seen tonight what happens to those who do try to set themselves above God. And while hopefully the threat of wild dogs and wild birds isn't something we face most days um, and might not apply to us, eternal death and separation from our good and gracious triune God does. What goes up must come down. Now to close... Uh, there's one more use for this saying that we haven't really explored. Most of the time we've been looking at it, it's been pretty negative, right? But there is one more use that is positive, that brings us hope, joy, and peace. What goes up must come down applies to our Savior as well. For after his death and resurrection, offering us salvation, forgiveness, and eternal life, he ascended into heaven and is now seated and reigning at the right hand of the Father. But this isn't Christ's last promise for us. He promised that he will return on the last day. Our Lord and Savior who ascended, who went up, will come down. He will descend to separate the sheep of his pasture from the wild goats who have gone their own way. He will descend with the angels and saints to purify those living and the world from sin, 
so that the faithful will have life everlasting in the new heaven and new earth. Because Christ lives and ascended, he will come down again for each and every one of us. Thanks be to God that this saying, what goes up must come down, isn't just negative, reminding us of Jezebel being defenestrated out a window by three, two or three eunuchs, but more appropriately pr- reminds us of the final promise that we so eagerly await for from our Lord and Savior, that because he ascended, because he went up, he must and will come down for each and every one of us. Amen. Now may the peace which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand and confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, And in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Stand for the prayers of the church. Almighty and everlasting God, who is worthy to be held in admiration by all people, we give you humble and wholehearted thanks for the countless blessings, both earthly and spiritual, which without any merit or worth on our own part, you have given to us. We praise you especially that you have preserved your saving word and the holy sacraments of your church in their purity and truth. And we ask you, O Lord, to preserve and extend your kingdom of grace and to grant unto your church throughout the world true doctrine and faithful pastors who shall preach your word with power and help all who hear it rightly to understand and truly believe it. Send forth missionaries into the mission field and open the door of faith unto all who do not know the saving work of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In mercy, remember the enemies of your church and bring them into salvation as well. Be the protector and defender of your people in all times and of trouble and dangers. And may we, in communion with your church, and in brotherly concord with all our fellow Christians, fight the good fight of faith, and in the end receive the salvation of our souls through Christ's death and resurrection. Bestow your grace upon all the nations of the earth. Especially do we ask you to bless our land and all its inhabitants and all who are in authority. Cause your glory to stay among us and let mercy and truth, righteousness and peace prevail always. To this end, 
We give to your care all our schools and pray you to make them nurseries of useful knowledge and Christian virtues, that they may bring forth the spiritual fruits of life in you. Graciously defend us from all disasters of fire and water, from war and disease, from shortage and famine. Protect and prosper everyone in their appropriate callings and vocations, and cause all useful arts to flourish among us. Be the God and Father of the widow and the fatherless children, the helper of the sick and the needy, the comforter of, the re- of those rejected and distressed. We ask you to accept our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, together with the offering we bring before you, which we give in remembrance of all the gifts you have given us, namely, your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray for all of those who are in need of your care. We pray especially for those who have been affected by, uh, in Houston and and throughout the the Caribbean, by the hurricane barrel. We ask, Lord, that you would restore them to their lives uh, soon so that they may continue to do all of the things that you have called them to do. We pray for all those who are sick especially for Bennis Johnson and Robin Fryman, who both have upcoming surgeries. But we also continue to pray for David Lehrman, Tommy Woodward, Edwin Lundenberg, Maria Ripley, Linda Davis, Kate Bartlett, Wayne and Layla, Tony and his family, Amy, Albert Swerlick, Emil Petruca, David Lawrence, Nelson Zayas, and Robert Johnston. Lord, you know what all of these, your servants need. We pray that you would lay your healing hand upon them if it is your will. But more importantly, Lord, we ask that you send your word and your means of grace to them so they may be counted among the sheep of your pasture. We pray for the family and friends of Frank Watson who was called to his heavenly home. We ask, Lord, that you would Bless those people uh, that, that have been affected by this. That you would give them peace and comfort in the words, in your holy words. And hope in the saving promises of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We also pray for those who serve in our armed forces and first responders. We pray for Lucas Cantu, Mike Mirage, and Mike Marby. Lord, we ask that you would watch over them as you have promised to do for all of those who call upon your name. And as we are strangers and visitors on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the new heaven and new earth, doing the work you have given us to do while it is day, before the night comes when no person can work. And when our last hour shall come, support us by your power and receive us into your everlasting Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. Please be seated.
Thank you, as always, for being here. The only announcement, I know, I know you're all really tired of hearing it, but it's VBS. It's coming up soon, like 11 days, 12 days, something like that, a week and a half. So if you haven't signed up, we could definitely still use your help. And if you haven't completed your background check slash uh, child training, we do need to get that done. If it's expired, let me know. I'll send you another one. But we do have to have those in before VBS, before you can help at VBS. So if you haven't done that and need me to send you links, I can. And if you've gotten them and haven't done them yet, get on them. Any, any other announcements? All right. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.